experience and learn about the world of teas with the Ronnefeld Tea Academy. It's the diversity of tea that makes it so enjoyable. Tea's flavor doesn't just depend on the plant itself. Other factors such as altitude, climate, soil, harvest time and processing influence a tea's taste. Strong, nutty, mild, malty or flowery for example. The young tea leaves are picked by hand according to the same principle in all high quality tea growing areas. Two leaves and one bud. Depending on the climate, season and altitude, a tea garden is ready for harvesting every two to three weeks. By then the bushes have produced new buds and picking can begin again. Here's an interesting statistic. Four kilos of green leaf must be picked to yield one kilo of finished black tea. By the time the pickers return with their full baskets from harvesting, they've earned their tea break. But first, their individual harvest is weighed. Then the entire harvest is immediately packed into sacks and transported as quickly as possible to the nearby tea factory. Here, the tea is spread out over huge withering tables and left to wither slowly over the next 12 to 18 hours at a moderate temperature. By then, the leaves have lost around 45 to 60 percent of their moisture and have shriveled, as you can see here, to nearly half their size. This is the moment when orthodox tea production begins, something Ronnefeld insists on for all its teas. First, the leaves undergo controlled rolling. Counter-rotating discs in the rolling machine break open the leaf cells without destroying them. This is the only way to ensure larger leaf grades. Then fermentation begins. Fermentation is the oxidization of the released cell sap. The tea matures during this two to three hour phase. It turns a coppery red color and develops its typical aroma. Tea craftsmanship is called for here. The quality of the finished tea depends on the care and expertise of the fermentation master. The tea then takes 20 minutes to travel through a multi-level dryer at around 90 degrees centigrade. This is where the tea takes on the dark color that gives it its name black tea. Some 20 hours have passed since the leaf was picked. The finished tea is now sorted according to leaf size by sieving. We call them leaf grades and there are four different classifications. Leaf tea, broken tea, fannings, and dust. The tea is then packed into special tea sacks according to grade. The sacks are lined with aluminum foil and completely airtight to keep the tea fresh and aromatic. In contrast to the orthodox method, many other factories use a faster method with automated machines. This method produces only average quantity teas and is called CTC. Naturally, a fully automated process like this can't produce top quality leaf tea. Only the smaller grades of broken, fannings and most of all dust. So, that's how black tea is made. But how does green tea stay green? By preventing fermentation. And in Asia, they've developed two ways of doing this. In Japan, immediately after harvesting, the freshly picked green leaves are steamed in a steam tunnel for around two minutes at a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade. This inactivates the enzymes that cause fermentation and the leaves can no longer oxidize. In China, they aim for the same result but traditionally use a different method. The fresh leaves are rapidly fired in a very hot pan, which also inactivates the enzymes. There is no fermentation here either and the tea retains its green color. But let's go back to black tea. Why does Ronnefeld only process teas made by the orthodox method? 
Only the orthodox method produces the large, perfectly fermented leaf and broken teas Ronnefeld needs for its top quality teas. In contrast, CTC production only produces lesser leaf grades of broken, fannings and dust. Ronnefeld has close contacts with the best brokers in all key tea growing regions. Colombo, Calcutta, Cochin, Jakarta, Hong Kong and Taipei. As experienced tea tasters, they make sure that Ronnefeld only buys premium teas, much to the joy of tea lovers throughout the world.